to start what should be, <coughs> I think, a, an occasion for some celebration because uh, what we are here to do jointly today is to launch the um, uh, land use recovery plan for Greater Christchurch. And I want to begin by thanking all of the uh, partners in this uh, ECAN, uh, Waimakariri District, Selwyn District, uh, Naitahu, and of course uh, Christchurch City Council. We uh, have known for a long time that these earthquakes would bring pressure on the need for new development opportunities in our Greater Christchurch area. And while it's been good to see uh, the response that we've had so far, uh, there was always going to be a need to have a greater degree of clarity moving forward. Back in, I think, about 2003, uh, the partners uh, got together to put together a, a document known as the Urban Development Strategy. Now that went through its long planning processes uh, as a normal sort of, uh, change of this nature uh, might ordinarily take. But after the uh, earthquakes, uh, trying to move things forward, there was agreement reached that we would use Section 27 of the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Act to put in place uh, effectively uh, the land that was set aside in the uh, strategy. Uh, and unfortunately, that led to judicial review. Uh, those who were not included, who had land that, that, that uh, who, who wanted it to be included, uh, and we're trying to achieve that through uh, the Environment Court, uh, objected strongly to that, uh, and we were judicially reviewed. I have to point out that they could well have uh, had the opportunity to move that land into the urban development strategy uh, or to the uh, provisions of, of, that were made under Section 27 through the uh, district plan reviews that were obviously going to take place in a truncated form post that promulgation. So we are unfortunately about two years behind where uh, I would have liked to have seen us. But um, in saying that, uh, this is a very good plan, creates new opportunities for uh, development across Greater Christchurch. Uh, in in uh, particular it will help address that housing supply issue. It will also create a, a price break uh, pressure on new land, which is extremely important. Uh, for our economy and for the ability for people to house themselves. It will also support uh, business and industry to uh, make decisions about where they should locate uh, and where they can uh, anticipate future populations residing. It will clarify effectively where development may occur. So in a nutshell, uh, it will speed up recovery for residences, residents and businesses. We uh, knew that there were 7,000, or know that there are 7,000 properties being uh, demolished or relocated, and we expect as many as another 9,000 outside of those red zones to also face demolition. That uh, means that our response, if we are to manage this over a period of time, has to be large, uh, it has to be of significance. So this plan enables as many as 40,000 residential sections to be developed in the coming years in the priority areas nominated. On top of that, further eight to 10,000 residential dwellings could also now be developed through amended intensification rules across very specific parts of Christchurch City. And that provision will prevail for five years ahead of uh, decisions that will be made through a reconsideration of the district plans. And I suspect that that reconsideration will mean that there is more land available in that brownfields category. The Christchurch City Council has agreed to undertake that district plan review uh, of all of its living zones and to address those issues uh, in what I believe is going to be a very much growing city uh, over the next 12 months. It's also very clear that the regional policy statement uh, and Christchurch, Waimakariri and Selwyn district plans don't address the demands that now exist. Those plans were written for different times. So these new planning rules are very much needed. The Land Use Recovery Plan enables the Regional Policy Statement, Christchurch City, Waimakariri District and Selwyn District plans to be amended to specifically allow for the Greenfields development and localised intensification. 
Those uh, partners that I have spoken of uh, are all represented here to today, and I want to thank them particularly for the way in which they have engaged on this particular exercise. I'd like to acknowledge the work of Peter Skelton, particularly an ECAN commissioner, uh, whose vast experience as an environment court uh, judge uh, has had a huge influence on getting us to a point where we can say the process has been good uh, and the results are also going to be very good for our communities. So just to recap how this all happened, earlier this year I did ask uh, ECAN, using the authority granted under the Recovery Act, uh, to undertake this exercise and to lead it. And I'm delighted that they grabbed that uh, with um, uh, willing hands and made a great job of it. So we are at a point today where we have, um, I think, very clear direction uh, for people who wish to develop new residential opportunities and an opportunity for many people in Christchurch who may have felt that some of the land where they've had a demolished house uh, would lose value to in, in fact retain and probably grow value in that land. Uh, and there are a number of other smaller amendments in the Christchurch City uh, arrangements that I'm sure the Mayor will want to cover off when she speaks in a few moments. Can I just say that the decision-making document uh, is available on the website uh, and that this plan becomes effective at about 1.30 today. Thank you. I'd now like to ask uh, our gathering, gathered Mayors and uh, Commissioner and the Representative from Naitahu to make a few comments beginning with the Mayor, because I find she usually takes the longest. <laughs> Thank you, Minister. I'm very pleased uh, to be associated with today's announcement. Uh, it was a process that I had to come up to speed with very quickly as a brand new Mayor, and I too would like to pay tribute to Peter Skelton for the tremendous support that he showed to um, a majority new council uh, and helped us work through uh, these issues. My interest was very much focused on the area of natural hazards. I think the impact of the earthquake has exposed planning decisions that were not supported by good science and more particularly not supported by local knowledge and that's something that I think many of us have gained uh, from going through this experience that local knowledge is a very good addition to planning processes. The trouble is, is that changes to the district plan can take years as this council has um, experienced with Plan Change 48 as it's known, um, the flood management areas. And of course with the impact of the earthquakes we need to make changes uh, to that, that particular part of the, um, the district plan and we need to be able to do it much more quickly than we have been able to do it in the past. I think it took five years from start to finish for Plan Change 48 or for Variation 48 to become an operative plan change. It became operative just before the February earthquake. It is already out of date and we need to change it quickly. Um, so this will enable us to prioritise the work that we need to do in our district planning process. We will be able to um, take out the issues that need to be dealt with most importantly as priority areas it will enable us to work with affected communities in a much more educative process to begin with, but then fast track the plan changing process. And that is going to be really good for our city's recovery. Um, we are going to have a high level of expertise overseeing the hearings panels, and I think that that's going to make a, a huge difference as well. We will end up with good quality decisions and a good quality plan. The Minister's focus um, right from the outset, rightly, and as you've heard him here today, has been um, focused on the need for additional housing um, as a result of what we've experienced as well. But perhaps what I'd like to focus on is that what we have come to an agreement on is around the need for a design-led approach to intensification. People get frightened by the word intensification. They think that there's going to be multiple dwellings suddenly appear on their doorstep. This is actually about a design-led process that has a buffer between the living one zone and the intensification. And I think that that is a huge positive for our city and something that nobody should underestimate. And that will take effect immediately um, through this process. And I want to then end by simply acknowledging the process. 
the Minister does not have to consult with anyone about a recovery plan. Once the draft has been drafted and it has been presented to the Minister, there is no legal obligation under the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Act for consultation to occur. And I want to publicly express my gratitude to the Minister for waiting until a new council was elected and giving us a, have a, to have a chance to have a say and to gain our buy-in. And he gained our buy-in and we went through a really positive process for doing that. And again, Peter Skelton was very supportive in that as well. But I think that what was also incredibly important was that the Minister understood that a new council that had been elected on the uh, platform of transparency and accountability needed to be able to put all of the options out in the public arena and he gave us permission to do that as well. And that is just something he didn't have to do and again I want to acknowledge it. Um, and then finally willing to come and talk to our entire council um, and, uh, and, and really sit down and talk through the issues in an incredibly positive way. Um, I just want to say thank you. I believe it's a real breakthrough and I believe it's what the people of Christchurch want to see central government, local government and regional government all working together. Can I get you to sign my nomination? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Minister. And I'd also like to acknowledge the work uh, Peter Skelton has put into the, into this uh, process, and uh, also you, Minister, and your officials in Sarah. That, uh, as Mayor Leanne has just said, has been a, a very good process. The uh, this is actually a combination of, uh, of, as the Minister said, a couple of years of work. It was very clear after the uh, September earthquake of 2010 that we needed a plan to work to, and in Canterbury we already had one. It was the Urban Development Strategy, uh, and without having that basis to work on, I think life would be much more difficult. However, we needed to enshrine it in a, in a regional document, and that's been a, uh, a process that's been fought with difficulty over the last uh, couple of years. So finally to have it in the form of a land use recovery plan, it's not the whole UDS of course, it's only those elements that will help us to recover from the uh, earthquakes, um, is actually a huge step forward. What people often uh, talk about the Waimakariri district as, as growing, but I, I'm more conscious actually of, the, of those thousand red zoned uh, properties that the minister mentioned, 1,000 of those are actually in Kaiapoi, Pines and Kairaki. And so we're a, we're a, a district that is uh, having to take planning extremely seriously. And, uh, and we're determined through this uh, land use recovery plan to keep consulting with our communities as we uh, come through this, this earthquake. So it is a great day. It's been one we've been waiting for a long time. Thank you, Minister. And, uh, and uh, I also like to um, pay tribute to our partners, uh, uh, Ngai Tahu, um, uh, Christchurch, Solwyn and Ekan and the New Zealand Transport Agency in the, um, the way we've worked over quite a few years now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can I just say we're delighted to have got to the stage where we are today and, and to this event here today. I'd also just like to acknowledge and express my appreciation for all the collaboration and cooperation between all the partners involved that we see up here today, and that's what's really enabled us to get to where we are today. And I appreciate all that and thank you for that. Thank, thank you, you, Minister. Thank you. Uh, Minister, thank you very much for inviting also Naitahu to be here. Unfortunately, Sue Mark couldn't be here, but he's asked me to say a few words. And they're similar to all what's been said today, that we appreciate being involved, in particular um, ECAN, ensuring that uh, we are involved as a partner. You all have said that. And indeed, I think on behalf also of Tūrunanga in particular, that's Tuahiwi, that's in the Waimakariri district, Rapaki, that's in the Christchurch district. They are in the plan, and that was something that we were very grateful for having. So thank you very much. I'd just like to congratulate you, Minister, on today. It's a very special, uh, special day, and we were certainly privileged uh, uh, to be involved at the um, beginning of the uh, the process and uh, I'd like to acknowledge the collaboration of all the, the partners and acknowledge the staff that uh, that worked uh, over those two years to bring it to fruition because we certainly 
at ECAN know how you all uh, worked. Thank you very much. Thank you. So before we take questions, can I just uh, acknowledge, uh, as uh, Dame Margaret said, all of the staff who have been involved in this, from the, uh, the team at CERA, who I know have spent many, many hours on it, uh, the team in, in Christchurch and the, the teams in Waimakariri and so on, and of course uh, ECAN as well. We're very grateful for your work. It's sort of These things don't materialise. And while I'm sort of standing here holding a thin pile of documents, the reality is that the rules behind this thing are voluminous. <laughs> uh, we're going to get them down to a smaller number of rules, I think, eventually with, uh, with your work, Leanne, I hope. But uh, you have to have those to protect uh, individuals' interests. Uh, and how they cross-match, if you like, is very, very important. It takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, so I'm very grateful to all those who put all that time in and, uh, and got to all sort of where we are. We tend to stand here with all due respect to my fellow elected people, uh, our representative from Naitahu and Dame uh, Margaret, uh, taking uh, some of the praise for everyone else's work effectively. Um, but we do it well, so that's the really <laughs> important thing.